Okay, um, will the Wissahickon School District Board of Directors please come to order? Uh, Mrs. Durkosh, please conduct a roll call of the board. Thank you, Mr. Antonio. Ms. Mrs. David? Here. Mrs. DiPietro? Here. Mr. Frank? Ms. Greenstein? Mrs. Heyman? Here. Mr. Stoloff? Mrs. Walsh? Mr. Antonio? Here. Seven present, one absent. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, Republic, one nation, God, people. Okay, um, I'd like to every welcome everyone to seven, September 17th. 2018 special public board meeting of the Wissahickon School District's Board of Directors. Um, I'd also like to note that prior to this meeting, the board met in executive session to discuss personnel and legal matters. Uh, tonight's meeting is all about filling our vacant board seat. So it's, it's a special meeting um, that doesn't fit our normal flow of business. And uh, I just wanted to start off by saying that uh, a few weeks ago, we put out a solicitation, an open request for candidates who are interested in applying to fill uh, the vacant board seat. And we had a uh, pretty overwhelming response. Um, there were, I guess in total, 18 people who um, submitted uh, their application to uh, serve on the board, which is fantastic. And um, I think now, you know, when a board seat becomes vacant, and this happens uh, occasionally in school districts around Pennsylvania, uh, districts can expect to see typically three to five uh, applicants um, coming forward. And um, our solicitor, Jeff Sultanic, who's spent, I think, over 40 years actually serving Pennsylvania school districts, said he's never seen a response rate like we've gotten um, in his, again, 40 plus years of serving school districts. He's rarely ever seen 10, um, and certainly not uh, 18 that we have. Um, so my first question was, everyone knows this is an unpaid volunteer position, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to make, make sure that that's uh, crystal clear. Um, and oftentimes, uh, it can feel like a thankless job as well. But um, I think the level of interest and civic engage engagement that we've seen from you guys and the community generally um, for serving on the board is, is fantastic. And it's a great thing. Um, so we're really fortunate to have so many great candidates um, to choose from. But the large number obviously um, presents some logistical concerns for us. And so we're breaking up this session into essentially two rounds. Uh, round one will be opening statements from every single candidate. Um, in essence, you'll have up to three minutes to address the board and state your case for why you want to be a board member um, and also why you think you'd be an effective board member. Um, after that round of opening statements, the board uh, will take it all in and we may have a little bit of discussion, but I will poll then uh, each of our board members to see which of the candidates they would most like to hear from further and uh, interview further. Um, we'll try to narrow down the field to a short list, um, and that short list will move on to round two with several more interview questions uh, that you will be asked. After that, uh, second round of interviews will then take public comments from anyone who wants to speak about uh, one of the candidates or the board seat they can see process in general. Um, I think I've heard uh, through the grapevine that there might be some folks in attendance who are looking forward to the public comment period uh, to address some other topics beyond what's on our agenda here tonight. But uh, given the number of candidates we need to hear from and the expected length of the meeting, I'm only going to be taking public comments uh, related directly to the board candidates or the board process itself. Um, if you have another topic that you wanted to speak on, I apologize, but I strongly recommend that you come next week's board meeting or any board meeting after that where there's a public comment period to speak on any topic. I want to get that out of the way in case you're <coughs> waiting for that chance to speak in public. Um, after public comments, then we will move on to some deliberations uh, by the board of all the candidates that we've seen. And after that, we'll take nominations for someone to be appointed to the board. We'll do a round of voting and essentially the first candidate that gets five, at least five out of eight votes from the board, be appointed as a um, board member. 
So we're going to do all of that um, tonight, get done before it's the over-under, Wade. Uh, um, but our goal is to leave this room with a really strong candidate to fill the vacant seat on our board. Um, and so with that, I guess we can get started. Um, I think uh, as a matter of logistics, 17 or 18 candidates. I think there's a few that uh, notified us for one reason or another they uh, are not coming tonight. So I think we're down to in total 15. Okay, so 15 candidates. Um, we're going to do like a random draw, I guess. Be in what order. Um, you're going to provide your opening statement to the board. Um, and the way we're doing the process is that when it's your turn, uh, you'll come to the podium, make your statement, and then you can sit in the audience. But until it's your turn, you're going to be outside the room so you don't hear everyone else's statement. Um, and Wade, I think Tina will help her manage the logistics of. Um, so, with that, um, the 15 candidates, can I ask you guys to maybe uh, congregate to where uh, T is over there uh, to pull a number? And uh, we'll get started. So Joe, I would say um, another thing that we should shoot for here is to finish this on September 17th. I second. Uh, yeah, all those in favor say aye, aye, passed. <laughs> first and best contestant. Um, All right. <laughs> my name is Julia Sable. I am, uh, I am new to Wissahickon. Uh, I am a, a scientist at Merck. Um, it's a recent changeover. Um, I have 25 years of academic science experience, and during that time I did my doctorate in education at the Teachers College at Columbia University, specializing in secondary education. Uh, with a specialization in 7 to 12 in higher ed. So I have generated courses for Columbia University, Barnard University, the Cooper Union. Um, so I have a lot of curriculum development experience. I have, um, during my PhD training, I have had extensive policy training, uh, ed policy, history of ed, uh, well versed in all current reporting <laughs> and reports that continue to change over the years. Um, I did my doctorate over a long period of time, so it's really interesting to watch how much the, uh, the reports have changed. My interest in a board is obviously my daughter is, is attending um, uh, Stony, Stony uh, sorry, Shady Grove. I keep saying Stony Creek because I've been reading about it all week. Um, <laughs> Shady Grove Elementary, she's in third grade. Uh, we 
we moved here because we intend to be here for a long time. Um, my uh, personal work experience has led me to work with um, multi-million dollar budgets every year uh, as a scientist and running large academic labs, so I have um, pretty decent Excel skills. Um, I also am very good at listening to large groups of people when they have uh, different asks, and um, I'm excellent at consolidating those and trying to come up with novel solutions. I think that there are um, a number of reasons why somebody would volunteer for this, and obviously it's very popular um, <laughs> today. But uh, so for me, I'm, I'm relatively new to this area, so I don't actually have a lot of bias or asks or particular side agendas. My daughter's here. I want to see this school uh, thrive and excel, and I think that my background in terms of um, science education and, and just generally, like, you know, being participating in, in former PTAs and things like that have led me to think that this might be something that I would be very, you know, good at. Um, there are things that I think will be challenging for you guys, uh, given what I've seen so far. And uh, I keep a cool head, and I definitely keep, uh, you know, I keep a cool head, and I also try to make sure that whatever I'm doing has a justification and data to come with it. That's the scientist in me. So thanks. Do I see? It, All right, thank down. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can have a seat now, and uh, get to hear everyone else. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Joanne Sirota. Um, I am honored to be here uh, to talk with you uh, about applying and becoming a member of the Wissahickon Board of School Directors. As a resident of the district for more than 28 years and having our children attend the Wissahickon schools, I have witnessed the joys, the accomplishments, and the issues children and families have encountered over the years. When my children attended, I was involved with the Blue Belt and Middle School PTOs for many years, as well as volunteering for fundraising activities, school trips, classroom support, and giving educational sessions in my children's classes on various healthcare topics. I get a little nervous, I'm sorry. You're fine. <laughs> Thank you. As a doctorally prepared, advanced nurse practitioner with experience uh, as president of my nurse practitioner association, NAPNAP, as well as being the current president of the NAPNAP Foundation and current board member of the Pediatric Journal of Healthcare and a previous member of the Kellyanne Dolan Board of Directors, um, our local community foundation, I believe that I have the knowledge and the qualifications for being a school board member. I have been involved in our community for more than 35 years. My husband and I began our pediatric practice in 1982 in Ambler and have had the privilege of providing primary pediatric health care to families throughout Ambler and Montgomery County. It has been an incredible experience for us. We have seen or I have seen our patients grow from babies infancy through college, and now we are currently seeing our grown-up patients' children. It is amazing. Working in our community has given me the opportunity to encourage good education for all of our patients and encourage them to explore, experience, and to excel to their fullest potential and to the best of their ability. I want to thank you so much for this opportunity to express my desire to serve on the Wissahickon School Board and hopefully continue to empower students to the best of their ability for their future and for that of our world. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Good evening. 
My name is Ian Berg, and I appreciate your time. I do not stand here as an advocate for big change. I believe that the board is following with the agenda set in the past election cycles, and I would hope and expect the board to stay the course with its current initiatives, regardless of who is appointed here tonight. With that in mind, and as I stated in my letter of interest, I would hope to add value to the board, mostly through my experience with organizational governance and best practices. Without making too many assumptions about your experiences, I think it is always helpful for the board to update its policies to reflect the current environment before a need or a crisis arises. Too often in my professional experience and my organizational experience, I've seen the difficulty of a board trying to work efficiently and effectively with guidelines that were developed piecemeal or that may be inconsistent, unclear, or outdated. In terms of curriculum, I appreciate the board's dedication to STEM. I would only hope to add to that a more enhanced aspect of leadership development. Even though leadership doesn't fit nicely into the acronym of STEM, I do believe that leadership development and training does fit with the great citizenship and service programs that are currently in place, particularly down into the elementary schools and through faculty training. I think there is a continued trend of emphasizing these traits, leadership, citizenship, and service, that has started with the business schools and the law schools and missions and curriculum, and has funneled down to colleges and all the way down through high schools to the elementary school level. I must restate, however, that I do not see a need for a fundamental change, uh, especially through an appointed position, because I believe that the current programs are already advancing these values. And with that said, I look forward to the opportunity to address more questions should I advance to the interview section. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Paul Badger. Uh, I'd like to first thank the board, uh, Chairman Antonio, for the opportunity to be here this evening and to present in front of you. Uh, my name is Paul Badger. I'm a graduate of Wissickon High School, class of 1986. Uh, and I am a proud resident of Bluebell since 1979. Uh, my family moved here in search of an education system that was going to be prominent and premier for our family. Uh, I have a sister who suffers from special needs. Uh, she was born with Down syndrome. So an educational system that would be supportive of her special needs, uh, as well as for me, was of prominent importance for our family. That was the driver that brought us here. Uh, my father, who is a retired management analyst with the federal government, and my mother, who is a career educator. Uh, she was a teacher, an administrator, as well as a consultant in the Philadelphia School District, uh, who all happened to be here and support this evening, um, w did a lot of analysis in determining what school systems would be best for us. And they soon determined that Wissickon was the place that we should uh, matriculate through. And they were 100% correct. I started uh, my uh, matriculation here at Shady Grove uh, and went on to the middle school and the high school. Uh, I graduated in 1996, as I said, with honors uh, from the high school. I served uh, as vice president of my class, a member of the Future Business Leaders of America, uh, the Black Student Union, uh, the Key Club, the Ski Club, uh, and was also captain of the track team, the cross country team, and the spring track team. Uh, so I tried to take advantage of all that the school district had to offer, and uh, I think it paid off in the long run. Uh, for my sister, she was able to thrive in an environment that was both nurturing and supportive for her and her special needs. Uh, she graduated from the high school as well and uh, made lifelong friendships that she maintains to this day, uh, as well as uh, the ability to work and be a productive member of society here in Bluebell. Uh, when I left Wissahickon, I went on to Morehouse College, where I obtained a degree in uh, business administration with a concentration in marketing. Uh, 
I graduated cum laude uh, and was uh, one of the highest ranking in my class. I then went on to uh, the uh, Northwestern University where I got an MBA at the Kellogg Business School. I had a triple major in marketing, finance, and strategic planning. Uh, the balance of my educational experiences, I think through high school, through college, and through graduate school, uh, have come and given me the cornerstone and the foundation uh, for my success in business and my later success in my career, which I just want to touch on briefly. Um, I uh, came back to the area in 1996 with an opportunity to work for McNeil Consumer Products Company. Uh, that's what brought me back to Bluebell, uh, as well as my family being here and the, the need to be close by. Uh, through that experience, I got my corporate experience and then went on to start my uh, business practice or my uh, real estate practice, uh, which I've maintained and, and has been thriving to this day. Uh, so for 22 years, I've run uh, an, uh, a thriving business in this community and in, in Philadelphia. Uh, that success has led to several board appointments um, from the current mayor of Philadelphia as well as the previous administration. Uh, I served on at least six boards uh, through both administrations and I'm currently working on four other civic association boards uh, where the key focus is education, is improving jobs and improving our communities. Um, and that's been very important work, which um, I think will help to make me uniquely qualified to serve on this board if I'm so fortunate and to contribute in a productive way uh, first day. Um, in addition to that, and in closing, I'll just uh, briefly just touch on a, a few other experiences that I think will, will be very beneficial uh, if I'm so fortunate to be elected. Um, the fact that I have a special needs sister and I have that background, uh, I understand that process and that's of utmost importance to me in the school district to make sure that that's maintained and approved upon. Uh, I am very uh, happy about the good work that this board has done and the position that the school district is in um, both nationally and regionally in terms of being recognized as uh, an excellent school system, and I hope to be able to help to contribute to build upon that through my business experiences and through my board experiences, as well as my unique experiences. In addition, I think the minority component that I would bring to this board is also important. Uh, we have a growing minority population uh, in this community, and I think it is important for board members and for boards to be representative of that community and to be able to uh, speak to the needs of each member of our community. Um, and so I don't want to, uh, to take too much time. I know I have a three minute maximum. So I just want to thank again, the board for this opportunity to come before you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yep, whenever you're ready. Great. Hello, my name is Vinti Singh. Thank you so much for considering me for the position. Uh, my family and I recently moved to the Wissahickon School District uh, over the summer. I have a stepdaughter in second grade at Lower Gwynedd Elementary. I grew up in Montgomery County. I went to North Penn High School, so I'm somewhat local. Uh, I'm running for this position because I believe every citizen has a civic duty to fulfill, and I'm at an ideal place in my life to fulfill my duty. Although I'm new to the district, I'm armed with a plethora of perspectives. I previously served as a municipal reporter in Fairfield County, Connecticut, where I covered multiple budget processes. Um, in which districts face uh, the similar issues that Wissahickon faces, uh, how to balance planning for the future while not overburdening the tax base. So I've seen multiple ways um, that that problem has been attempted to be solved. Uh, I covered other issues as well, such as privatizing school transportation, attempting to move to defined benefits for municipal employees, and how to reduce cyberbullying, to name a few. I place the utmost importance in knowing all of the facts before making decisions that will affect students and the community at large. My personal interests include environmental education, and I am an outings leader for the Sierra Club's Student Programming Division. I have liaised with several school and community um, programs in Philadelphia, and through this role I have learned a lot from several school administrators that I've worked with. 
Um, in closing, I want to thank you for considering me for the board, and I look forward to the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, board members. My name is Amy Ginsburg. I'm a resident of Lower Gwinnett Township. And I'm here, I think Mr. David said it best, uh, Mr. Frank, uh, that schools perform best when parents are involved. And I think that's really important. I think as a parent in the community, I have three children. Uh, I think it's very important to be involved and make sure that our school system continues to provide a high level of education, not just for my children, but for the other children within our district. I'm an attorney, I have 13 years experience. 11 of those years I've spent working here in Ambler, representing individuals in consumer litigation matters. Um, during that time I've only represented individuals, uh, not businesses, and I think that's something that would carry over well to the board, uh, that I've represented individuals in the past. Uh, as a board member, I think I would wanna continue to represent our students, as well as the families in our community and advocate on their behalf. As an attorney, I also know that there are many areas of the law that touch and concern decisions and actions that the board take. And having a background in the law, I think, would certainly be beneficial to the board uh, and aid me in helping to make decisions on behalf of the board. I'm also a very quick and independent learner. I remember when I was watching the video from the 2015 appointment process, Ms. Becker expressed some concern that the appointee wouldn't really have the benefit of having an initial introductory type course with Mr. Coleman on what the board does. Uh, but I feel being a quick learner as I am, that I would be able to get up to speed rather quickly and join the board in making decisions and understand the current issues that are before the board. I, as you saw on my resume, I've taken seven bar exams. Um, I had to study for those over the course of a couple weeks. Um, to get prepared and take those bars. Uh, so I, I do have experience in reviewing large amounts of information and understanding that information and then being able to apply it to a given situation. So I think certainly I'd be able to get up to speed rather quickly and be able to be a part of this board. <coughs> I also understand um, from meeting with former as well as current board members that there's a lot of information to learn and understand in being a board member. And I think that every day in my career as an attorney, I do just that, I review a lot of information. I get a lot of documentation during the course of discovery, and I need to review, in some cases, 10 pages of documents, and in other cases, 1,000 pages of documents. And I need to be able to understand that information and be able to aid my client in making a decision on how to proceed in his or her case. I think being a board member, I would be able to review large amounts of information and be able to understand that information and help the board, as well as myself, in making a decision, ultimately, on the issue at hand. I'm also a hard worker. I think that would be certainly something beneficial to the board. Uh, my mother-in-law recently said to me that I never throw a simple birthday party, and I think that that applies to everything in my life. I never really can do anything just halfway. I always go over and beyond. Um, and I think that's something I would certainly apply to anything I endeavor. Uh, and certainly if I was sele selected to be part of this board, I would certainly go above and beyond and not go halfway. I would certainly go 110%. Finally, I'm a team player. Uh, I may not always agree with the decisions that are made or agree with any other individual on the board. I'm an independent thinker. I like to keep an open mind, but I'm always going to be a team player and I'm going to work well with others on the board. Um, and I think that's certainly something that, you know, in this type of setting, you need to work well with one another. And I think that that's something I certainly would be able to do. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Hello. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank the members of the board uh, for having us all here tonight and for considering all of us. Uh, I know I'm probably taking up a, a lot of your time with 18 candidates and everything, but um, that said, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Brett Dublick, and I believe I should be strongly considered for the vacancy to fill the, uh, the, the current board position. Uh, my wife and I live in Lower Gwinnett. Uh, we have two young sons, the oldest of which will be entering the kindergarten program uh, next year. 
Uh, we moved to this area three years ago, and one of the deciding factors uh, driving our decision was to uh, be in the West Hicken School District. Um, it has a reputation for being one of the best school districts in the state, and that's one of the, the big reasons that we selected it. Uh, my interest in joining the board stems from my desire to positively impact the schools within my community. Uh, that includes overseeing the quality of schools uh, in which my own children will be attending. Um, and lastly, I've always felt that um, after establishing roots in a community that I would like to be actively involved in uh, a feeling of civic duty as well as a positive example to my sons. Uh, my relevant experience to the board consists of over a decade in the municipal uh, finance services business. Um, Using my experience from my current role as a municipal bond portfolio manager, uh, I can offer the board an unbiased opinion on both the debt that you have outstanding as well as any other financial services questions. Um, I feel that I can be a great asset not only to the board in general, but in addition, uh, the finance committee as well. Um, secondly, I can offer a unique perspective um, because I am a millennial. Uh, I looked outside and a couple of the other folks, most of them are a little bit older, um, but I feel that that adds a unique perspective. Um, while everyone views the world from a different lens, I feel that uh, additionally, uh, my experience having children going into the kindergarten program, um, combined with having a perspective as a younger member, a member of a younger generation may be beneficial. Uh, in conclusion, my experience, uh, all, with my experience in corporate boards, um, in the financial services industry has instilled in me one thing that I believe to be absolutely true, and that boards with the best governance are those that offer differing, unique, and sometimes conflicting opinions. Diverse boards composed of people of different ages, sexes, and races are superior to those who have uh, members all of the same life experiences. Uh, that said, I believe that I offer that unique perspective that would be beneficial to the board, the administration, the teachers, and most importantly, the children of the district, and I would be honored to serve if you allow me to do so. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sure. Good evening to the Wissahickon School Board, students, parents, teachers, administrative staff, and others in attendance. My name is Carl Horbath, and I'm delighted to speak with you tonight. As an educator, administrator, and as a parent, I admire and appreciate the hard work of the dedicated teachers and staff who support the thousands of students in the Wissahickon School District. Childhood is a critical time of development, and we must work together to create an optimal environment of learning operated and sustained by people who put children first and believe in the formation and education of responsible citizens. With foresight and determination, we must provide our children with the necessary tools to navigate our changing and challenging society. The environment of public education is rich with diversity and discovery, but it is not without academic and administrative challenges. Our public schools have issues with inadequate state funding while operational costs increase. Every day we see news stories about businesses and organizations struggling to remain competitive as increasing costs and burdensome financial commitments prevent them from uh, surviving in a competitive landscape. Pennsylvania education is experiencing similar financial troubles. In addition to the cost of expanding and maintaining facilities and funding for necessary priorities, such as the technology learning infrastructure initiative required to support 21st century learners, public schools must also comply with federal and state mandates and regulations that further impact financial responsibilities and drain resources used for education, sometimes eliminating programs, reducing staff, and increasing class sizes. With 500 public school districts in Pennsylvania, consisting of over 3,000 schools and charter schools and over 1 million students, most of which are enrolled in district schools, we must work with synergy to provide innovative ideas that meet our challenges, keep what is good, and ensure we do not deny our children the best education and support available. A top priority of this district is to prepare our students for their place in a rapidly changing world. 
and I will work in solidarity with others for the common purpose of supporting the needs of the 21st century learners. We must do more than prepare academically competent students. We have to help them become capable and responsible citizens who are proficient with skills in diversity, organization, communication, and management. In an environment dominated by rapid change, instability, risk, cost cutting, compliance, and need for innovation, we have to work together to guide the future of education. And to serve on the Wissick and School Board feels like a natural fit, and I believe I can bring positive and productive contributions through consensus building, communication, informed decision making, collaboration, as we work toward a shared vision that meets our challenges. My administrative career experience includes working for Fortune 500 companies and large nonprofit organizations. My academic career experience as a teacher and researcher began as an auto mechanic who discovered the love of learning and uh, while working full time earned a PhD and an MBA and raising a family. My work experience, educational experience and service and volunteer opportunities in the corporate nonprofit sectors provided me with like a range of versatility and objectivity that helps me examine and resolve challenging problems. I'm currently the Chief Information Officer and spent the last 20 years as a senior executive and leader in the higher education industry. Before that, I worked in the corporate sector. My recent work history includes uh, successful tenures at Gwinnett Mercy University and Temple University, and I teach at Arcadia University. My experience working with nonprofits mean I have to be fiscally responsible and creative in obtaining funding and resources to bring uh, to, to bring uh, resources into line with what is available. I've been able to acquire resources through collaboration, negotiation, and positive relationships. I also live a life of service by accepting appointments on board of directors, committees for nonprofit organizations, and volunteer to help schools and to help uh, underprivileged and people who cannot afford technology. Education is my vocation, and I spent a lifetime gathering experience as a student, teacher, and administrator. Everyone everywhere can always be a student because there's so much to learn about the world. From grade school to grad school, I've always been exhilarated by the illumination and insight education contributed to my personal development and awareness. School systems and teachers taught me about intellectual curiosity, diversity, scientific method, and common sense. My life's work is to ensure students have access to a quality learning environment so they too can obtain skills, awareness, and mindfulness that allows them to achieve their potential and enjoy lifelong learning. Thank you for your time and attention. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for your time in considering my candidacy for the vacant Wissahickon School District Board Director position. A quick bio on me. Uh, my name is Christina Hughes, and I've been a Bluebell resident for the past 14 years. I am the very grateful mom of three awesome kids, uh, two boys and one girl, who are enrolled in the district. My youngest son and daughter attend Bluebell Elementary. They're in first and fourth grades, respectively. And my oldest son is in sixth grade at the middle school. I am also the proud product of public school education, attending from K through 12, spanning three different states. And as such, I fiercely believe in our country's public education system and want my children to reap the benefits of eventually being graduates of Wissahickon High School. Why do I want to serve? I'm excited for this opportunity for three primary reasons. Through my participation on the board, I will endeavor to foster a collaborative relationship between the board and administration, as well as the district and the community. Ensure students have the appropriate avenues to pursue their passions while receiving a robust core education and provide strategic direction, guidance, and input in executing the district's range of goals. Why I believe I'm qualified to serve. I believe I possess the requisite qualifications to serve as a school board director based upon my established community involvement, 
my corporate leadership experience, and my commitment to transparent communication. I served for two years as treasurer at the Bluebell Elementary School for the Home and School Association. During my first year, I reestablished the HSA's 501c3, which had lapsed, enabling donations made by local businesses and school families to be tax deductible, thereby increasing the amount of funds raised to enable more support and activities for the Blue Bell Elementary School students, families, and broader community. I also serve as elder at the First Presbyterian Church of Ambler. As an elder on session, which is the leadership team of the church, the role entails working collaboratively with fellow elders who represent a diversity of gender, age, race, and socioeconomic levels. I participate on committees, present progress against goals, and raise critical issues for discussion and potentially voting, which translates to some of the duties of a director. My corporate leadership experience spans the last 15 plus years of my career as I worked my way up from project manager to vice president and chief operating officer. Through each level, I have leveraged my collaborative capabilities and working cross-functionally to achieve corporate goals. These strengths would serve me well in the director role, working collaboratively with other board members and also with the administration. Additionally, the success of my daily corporate experience in working and negotiating with various internal and external stakeholders hinges on transparent communication and relationship building, which would prove beneficial in the director role as the board interacts regularly with parents, guardians, families, teachers, administrators, and the general public. In summary, if selected, I will give tenaciously of my time and talents to continue to grow the excellence of the Wissahickon School District. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Dr. Jamila Burns Cooper and I am standing here with you today to express my strong desire to be on the Wissahickon School Board of Directors. For the past 52 years, the Board of Directors have strived to maintain a diverse community of empowered students, prepared to excel in schools and later in the professional world. As a tireless champion of equity, in education, a seasoned pediatric physical therapist, and now a mother of a student in Stony Creek Elementary School, I share in that commitment. It is my life's work to ensure all children have access to an equitable education, and to that end, I have actively worked to remove barriers associated with physical disabilities in accordance with clinical knowledge. Specifically, I have provided countless hours of physical therapy in schools within Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia. My profession enables me to work with children, with education administrators, parents, students, teachers, and other licensed clinicians with the goal of propelling our young ones forward and the skills and confidence necessary to overcome challenges. I would be an asset for addressing matters with children with special needs within the district. Along with being a physical therapist with over 15 years of experience, I've also been an advocate for gender and racial equality in my community through organizational affiliations. I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, which has a history of 100 years of advocating for scholarship, social action, and organizational community advancement. I am also one of the chapter chartering members for the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. My membership in both organizations have, with my membership in both organizations, I have experience in serving on two committees simultaneously for the goal of fundraising, membership, community outreach, policies and procedures, and programming. My service history affords me tools and practice that can serve as, what, what that can serve into, that can serve and translate into success with the task of helping the school board represent the students, maintain fiscal responsibility, continue with its current task 
of individual school expansion due to population growth, help build upon its history of academic excellence and the advance and advance the district's aptitude for success. In addition to my professional experience, I'm a lifelong learner. I've obtained a bachelor's of science in kinesiology, a master's in physical therapy, and a doctorate in physical therapy. This demonstrates my dedication to higher learning and the thirst of knowledge, which can be an asset for motivating our youth. In the words of John Dewey, our success is the rent we pay to live in our community. Serving on this esteemed board would allow me the opportunity to help prepare our little scholars for the world, allow me to leave my imprint in the community, and help me model an excellent standard for my own little scholar. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name's Andy Abramson. I am the proud parent of a Wissahickon graduate and a current high school student in the district. Um, what I think I bring to the table is vast experience as a board member. Uh, I've served on two different nonprofit boards. Um, I've served on the Kellyanne Dolan Memorial Fund, which was in Ambler and is now in Fort Washington, which provides financial assistance for the needs of seriously ill children not covered by insurance. I served as a board member in that organization for three years and two years as president. I've also served on the board of the Penn Jersey American Red Cross Blood Services Division, um, where uh, it was a volunteer board where I was helping bring out the message of giving blood, donating blood, and working with new sponsors on blood drives. In both those experiences, um, I've had the opportunity to see how boards work, to see how board members from all different backgrounds collaborate and for the better needs of the organization. In terms of my professional career, um, I'm an employment law attorney and I own my own practice right here in Bluebell. Um, and in that practice, I work with people from all different backgrounds, age, race, sex, religion, national origin, people that need accommodations in the workplace. I've gained an understanding of how individuals, business, and businesses have to deal with people on an everyday basis. Um, I've also worked with students in our community. Uh, for many years, I served as a volunteer intramural and travel sports coach, um, and now I'm kind of on the other side. I serve as a travel soccer referee. Um, in terms of focus, which I think need, that I can bring to the board, some of the priorities I have is continuing to have as safe a school as we possibly can. Um, I've reviewed the recent recommendation of the government's school safety task force report, um, and I know we've began to implement things there, but in today's world, that's one of the most important things um, that we need to continue to focus on and improve. Um, another priority, continuing to provide the highest possible education in the most economically responsible manner. Um, and continuing for this district, as it always does, to adapt to prepare students for a changing world. Um, lastly, just last week, um, I was at a back-to-school night, and I just marvel at the education and experience um, of our teachers um, that this board helps to leave and all the administrators, and it would be an honor to work with the board to continue the mission of the school district. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Claudine Pacho Niffin. I have um, three kids in the district right now. I have one in fourth, one in seventh, and one in eighth grade. Um, I, I do want to go back into a little bit of my background and experience, um, and the reason why I want to be on the board is to really, you know, I 
really have a passion for kids' education, um, as well as overseeing what's going on in this changing world that we have. There's schools a lot different now than it was when I was back in, in school. Um, my background, I'm one of seven kids. I have a very close-knit family. Um, I grew up in upstate New York, so I'm familiar more familiar with the New York State District. Um, my oldest sister has been a teacher in the elementary school for over 20 years, so I certainly hear the teacher side of things um, that go on. I have an engineering degree, and uh, at the time that I went to get it, there was no STEM classes or anything going on in, in school. I was lucky enough to have my dad, who forced me into the, the engineering degree, because I liked math, but was able to guide me there, so I'm a big proponent of trying to get more STEM education going on as well. Um, I had my career first. I got married later in life. Um, in my late 30s, I ended up getting married and starting my family. Um, so I had a career for 29 years um, that I'm still in, uh, in the twilight of it, as I would say. But I've worked um, in many different companies, GE, Dell, had my own company, um, et cetera, where I've learned a lot of leadership, um, a lot of communication, and more importantly, change management going on. Um, we moved here from Texas four years ago, um, where I was part of the district there. The Round Rock School District um, has, you know, everything's bigger in Texas. So they have seven high schools, 11 middle schools, and 34 elementary schools. Um, and I was part of that district where they were grooming me to be on the board there, um, but was chosen to be one of the community members, which was apparent um, to be one of 30 people who went in and met monthly with administrators to understand what was going on in the schools, um, as well as you know what the teachers were facing, what issues they were facing going on. Um, when we moved here, you know, we looked really heavily at what school district we wanted to go. Um, I commuted for six months going back and forth to Texas to here. I wanted my kids to finish the school year there and then find the best one that we, we could in the area. And we ended up uh, choosing Wissahickon, which we've been extremely pleased with um, since we moved here. I think I bring a fresh perspective um, in here, being my background of um, having the, the business side, as well as a lot of other HOA boards that I was on. Um, the HOA I was on for 600 homes and uh, oversaw that for the, the couple years I was I was on that board. Um, bringing community together was really the big focus and starting things as well as, you know, overseeing the, the, po the policies that were not very popular with some of the homeowners of wanting to change their, their backgrounds. Um, and then some of the other um, experience I have, I, I think I'm running out of time, but I was on the, um, the PTA board there, 800 kids. Um, leading the, the PTA board where we faced a lot of issues, overcrowding in the schools, um, as well as what to do with a lot of the funds we had. And uh, by listening to the teachers um, and the principal of the school, we ended up spending some of that money, um, not on technology, which the, the school was offering, but on stability balls to help the kids that have fidgeting issues. Um, it was certainly what the teachers wanted, not real popular with the parents to say we're gonna be buying a bunch of balls to go throughout the um, school, but certainly in an area where it's trying to listen to everyone's input as to what we needed to, to spend a surplus of money on. Um, and that being along with um, you know, focusing on the kids and the education and listening to the different studies of using those balls of how they get to, uh, they have a better learning uh, opportunity from there. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. On August 12, 2000, uh, August 15, 2012, our family got lucky. At that time, we were a family of five, now a family of seven, and we sold our house quickly and needed a place to rent. And fortunately for us, that place to rent was right here in Bluebell. We enrolled our first child at Bluebell Elementary, and the rest has been history for us. Wissahickon School District has supported my children and turned them into passionate learners who love to learn. And my sole interest in being here today and applying for this position on the board is to give back to the community that has given so much to me, to our family, and to our children. Why me for this position? Well, I've spent a career as a passionate, tireless advocate 
working on behalf of children throughout the country and throughout the world. My career has been giving a voice to the voiceless, whether it's children who are victims of the sex trade, trade or the slave trade in East Africa, whether it's standing before boards just like this in Illinois and New Jersey, representing poor and marginalized families. I've fought for children in almost every legal forum imaginable. And that passion that I have for children, well, I'll bring that for every single child here in the Wissahickon School District and to my work on the board. Admittedly, most of my experience in education is at the college and the law school level, but the only thing that matches my passion for children is my passion for education. I've developed cutting edge programs for lawyers, judges, social workers, countless professionals. I've developed a center that trains public interest lawyers throughout the country. I've developed an advocacy curriculum for fifth graders in Singapore. My CV lists the other programs and the recognition that I've received for this work. And I'll bring that same work and that same commitment to the board. Although I've represented children in education matters throughout the region and throughout the country, admittedly, I'm far from an expert. I'll need to work and I'll work hard to study and to learn the things that I need to learn. However, my broad experience in representing children in all kinds of forums, well, that'll help me to help the board or help the board to facilitate discussions when legal matters arrive. My administrative experience with budgeting, running a legal clinic, grant writing, it'll give me the skills to help create and manage plans. But most importantly, my passion for children, my love of education, and the recognition that we have amazingly talented people in this district, it'll make me a listener. I will listen to the community. I will listen to the administration, the staff, the teachers, and fellow board members. I'll support them in making a plan. I will support them in, with the resources to execute it, and I'll make sure that it gets executed. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believe I'm a good fit for this position, I look forward to working with you and serving our community. Thank you. Excuse me, before, uh, before you leave, uh, what is your name? Oh, I'm sorry, John Lohr, L-O-R-E. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> some of you know me and some of you don't. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Teresa Williams. Um, I've been a former board member. Um, and I just have a quick statement to read real quick. Um, the school board must have a vision, create structure and support for that vision and be accountable to the public. I believe that the board must be responsible and, ex and receptive to the parents, students, and staff, and the community at large. Encouraging, on, encouraging open and daily dialogue. A board member is a trustee of the community they serve. That trustee must be account accessible and willing to collaborate with all the members of the community. That includes all district staff. My effort as a board member would center and serve all the students in the community. One child is no more important than the other. We have a diverse community and I have a have to celebrate that diversity. Our students have to serve the education, our students are served the educational needs of all the children. All stakeholders, parents and management, as well as students must be partners in the endeavor if we plan to be successful. Some of you know that again, I'm a board member from 2000, and 2000 to 2008 and that really leaves a whole 10 year span. So it's not like I know I have a lot of ground to catch up on. 
if you choose to go this way. <laughs> I have served on a board for eight years, and I must say, most of them were productive years. During my time, I demonstrated what could be accomplished when you exercise good physical spending. During my tenure, I let nothing interfere with my decision making. Instead, I always opt to do what was in the best interest of our students here at Wissahickon and the Wissahickon community. I have two children, both attended, and I'm proud to say graduates of the Wissahickon School District. Both graduated with honors from community, one from Montgomery County Community College and one from Newman University. I have a grandson that will soon be a Wissahickon school in Wissahickon School District. I want to make sure we maintain the same, if not better, a high academic standards for his generation. I would like to, I like, would like to fill this, fill this vacancy because I have dedicated my life to public service and I cannot sit idle knowing my background and knowledge of our district can help provide a necessary leadership to keep the district on an even keel. This appointment would afford me the opportunity to focus on my goals. This is to be a voice and advocate for the students in the Wissahickon community. My life is devoted to community service. Before I started working for the Ambler Police Department, I was a full-time homemaker, and all my free time was dedicated to my church, where I was a youth leader, some of my responsibility included group coordination, trip planning, and during the summer, as well as teaching Bible study. As you can see, my life is dedicated to public service. In closing, in these academic times, I do not want to see our children's interests lost. While I understand the need for to show physical restraint and responsibility, we have to remember that our children of today is our future of tomorrow, and we have to com continue to invest in them. My only agenda is to assure that the Wissahickon School District maintains the high academic standards and for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for inviting me. Um, and I also want to thank the general public for coming here and all the candidates for, for your dedication. Um, my name is Sergei Nersasov. I'm um, uh, an associate professor of mechanical engineering at uh, Villanova University. Um, I held that position since 2005, so I've been there. Uh, this is my 14th year. Um, and prior to that, I spent time at uh, uh, Georgia Tech studying uh, for my PhD. Um, so I've been in academia pretty much all my life. Uh, and uh, the primary reason why I want to join the board is um, academics. Uh, I, have a, I have an eight-year-old uh, who goes to Stony Creek. She's in the third grade right now. Uh, and basically, I witnessed uh, what they study through, from K through the third grade, essentially. And uh, in my humble opinion, uh, I feel like this is um, not as strong as it could be, uh, to say the least, uh, but quite frankly, it's a little weak. Uh, I, th I don't think we challenge them enough. Uh, I don't think we uh, ask them uh, to do more advanced material. Uh, and I think they're perfectly capable of doing more advanced material and, and, and be challenged. And I'm pretty sure most of them would like to be challenged. Um, so uh, just a quick, very quick example to justify my point. Uh, I have a colleague uh, whose son is in the same grade as my daughter. Uh, he, he goes to um, uh, three different Istam. So and in the th second grade, uh, they did the entire multiplication table, 1 through 12, the division. Every week they had spelling assignments, 10 words per week, and they had tests every week. None of that happened in our school. Um, and I think um, this is something that we need to, to needs to be addressed because not only are we behind the world standards, but we're also behind the material, the, the the standards that are in uh, other schools uh, just a few miles from here. Um, 
So uh, how am I going to do that? Um, well, if I have an honor to, to join the board, I would uh, do some benchmark and start from the benchmarking and see what other schools uh, are doing, so other school districts are doing. Um, I want to take a look at the PSSA tests in the, from the past, um, uh, see if our curriculum and the level of the material that we give to the students uh, is compatible with the PSSA. If there are any gaps, they need to be filled. They need to be eliminated. Uh, and I also want to create some focus groups with the parents uh, to hear their concerns, their issues that they've had so far. And with all that together, bring it up to the board, discuss it, and see how we can implement this. So that's my primary goal in my adventure to join the board. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that was our final candidate. All right. Well, um, the board members, uh, I think uh, what's clear to me is that we have um, like a wealth of uh, good candidates to uh, consider and uh, um, think about for uh, filling our vacant board seat. Um, there was a lot that we heard from uh, today, but uh, I just want to let the audience know that we also got materials from every one of the candidates um, over a week ago. So we've uh, all spent some time prior to this meeting looking over resumes and cover letters of all the individual candidates, but it's always great to um, hear from candidates directly um, and in person to augment uh, sort of the paper review that we've done prior. But, um, you know, with all that, um, I guess uh, what we need to do now is take the 15 that we heard from so far and see if we could develop some consensus around a short list of candidates that we want to move on to round two, or we'll have a series of additional interview questions. So um, I think what we can do is maybe uh, give a minute or two um, for some of our board members to uh, gather their thoughts. Um, if anyone wants to make any uh, comments, feel free. But I'm going to uh, jot down a few final notes and then uh, see what uh, individual board members think. One comment I'll make for uh, the benefit of the audience, because all the board members know this, is that by uh, Pennsylvania school code, all deliberations and discussions of uh, selecting a board candidate have to be done in public. So it's a little bit strange from any other uh, job interview or any interview situation you might have been uh, involved with where um, again, we're not allowed to deliberate or discuss candidates uh, um, away from the public eye. So it may feel a little strange, but it's not our fault. It's kind of what we're forced to do. Okay, um, what is being displayed on the screen is, well, to be honest, I can't really read it, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I think I need reading glasses, but um, it is uh, a matrix of all the candidates, and uh, in order to whittle things down from the fifth field of 15 that we currently have, um, I'm going to go through in a minute and poll each of the board members on the top five candidates they would like to hear from and we'll collect each of our uh, um, tick marks of interest and we'll see if we have some consensus on a short list to take to round two. Okay, great. And uh, we're going to do this in uh, real time and live on the screen for everyone to see as uh, we go down, down the list. Um, does anyone want to uh, go first in... Uh... No? <laughs> no. Well, um, this, is, this is like ordering at a restaurant, right? It's like, if you're not quite ready, you, we can order, get your order last. <laughs> but uh, Pat, are you uh, ready? Yeah, I'm ready, and I also want to say what a marvelous group and qualified and experienced 
people. I'm only sorry that I have one slot to forward. I want to thank everyone who came tonight. Hope that they will continue to participate tonight. Um, but given that, uh, five folks that I sort of have in mind that I would like to hear about um, are the following. Um, Bill Sable, um, Christina. You're just going to have to go a little bit slower. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, thank you. Paul Badger. Ian Berg. And Amy Ginsburg. As I do this, if you would just uh, sort of review my, my work and go to the next person, that would be great. OK. I'm happy to go next. Oh, thank All you. All right, OK, Carol. OK. Okay, um, thank you everyone for coming. It's not easy to stand up there and... Um, the first person is Andrew Abramson, Paul Badger, Inti Singh, Ian Berg, Joanne Serrata, Five. Okay. I'm happy to go next. All right, uh, Debbie, please. Again, I have to compliment. I it was hard to pick five uh, such strong candidates. Uh, it's a tough choice. Um, but I would like to hear more from uh, Julia Sable, uh, Joanne Serrata, Paul Badger. Excuse me. I'm sorry. You get those three. Uh, Vinti Singh and uh, John Lohr. Debbie, if you could please just look and make sure I got that right. Thank you. All right. Wants to go next. Okay, Ronnie. Paul Badger, I would like to say the way I got on the board post-traumatic stress. I know how <laughs> difficult this is. So I'm glad I'm on this side. Uh, Paul Badger, Claudine Paccio, Amy Ginsburg, Joanne Stroda, Nina Hughes. Okay. Uh, Ron, please. And again, to all the uh, the people who uh, who have applied for this position, uh, I know how you feel because many years ago, I was in your seat, as was Teresa's. I remember once before. Okay, uh, the people. Uh, so uh, even if you do not get appointed uh, tonight, hopefully tonight, we uh, we, uh, we want all of you to still stay involved in our schools. We need everyone to help us do our job, because our students uh, need the entire community behind them. And uh, I would like, and I, I almost, I, there were actually six, but I'll, I have to narrow it down to five, right? Yes. Okay. So I would like to uh, see uh, uh, Badger, uh, Ginsburg, Hughes, Cooper, and Williams. Is that five? I hope it is. It is five. Could you just... Okay. Uh, and uh, did I say Berg also? You did, but that would be six. Okay. Uh, let's try again. Okay. Uh, okay, right. Okay. So it's, so it's Badger, yep. Ginsburg, uh, Hughes, Cooper, and William. Okay. Thank you. And uh, if you're part of the problem, I'm um, uh, not an excuse. Uh, my handwriting is so bad that even I have a challenge. Okay, David. I've narrowed my list down to fifteen. If I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Honestly, it's embarrassing to sit here in this seat with so much talent 
and knowledge and dedication to Wissahick and try to choose. Um, but be that as it may, here I sit. Um, choosing uh, Mr. Badger, uh, Ginsburg, Ian Berg, Minty Singh, and Christina Hughes. And uh, uh, Mr. Frank, your last person? My last one was Hughes. Uh, I, I think I got that one, didn't No, I didn't. Thank you. Oh, Singh. Thank you. Could you just check that and make sure I didn't mess it up? Thank you. That's correct. Thank you. All right, Tracy, you ready? <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for coming tonight. Um, I know this was really difficult for everybody. And I just want to remind you that if you don't make it now, run for election 19. Keep that in mind. Wonderful candidates that wonderful to have all of you running come uh, the 2019. Um, that being said, I am going to say for Hughes, Ginsburg, Berg, and Badger. I did it in reverse order because my last and I'm always last. So I went back. Got to wait. All right, so uh, that leaves me. Um, well, just to echo my uh, fellow board members, I, and again, I think um, it's, it's sort of like an embarrassment of riches, I guess, with having so many great um, uh, candidates for us to uh, consider and uh, um, choose from. And uh, one, uh, one note is that uh, Ronnie mentioned that in 2015, she first joined the board as part of uh, a board vacancy process as well. But uh, what wasn't mentioned was that Carol and I were also in the room that night and we didn't we didn't make it um <laughs> but we were so energized and excited about the prospect of uh, uh being on the school board that we chose to run uh in the subsequent election and uh, both of us got on so again we only have one spot to fill and so many great candidates um for those of you that don't make it um next election cycle in november 2019 um is a great opportunity to uh try to uh, get into the game and uh, we're always looking for uh, great candidates uh, who are committed, who are interested in public education, interested in uh, serving their community um, to uh, serve on the board. Again, unpaid position. Um, so you got to do it for the love because you're not doing it for the money. But with that being said, I'm going to give my top five. And uh, this is in no particular order. Um, Paul Badger, Amy Ginsburg, Christina Hughes, Claudine Paccio, and Jamila Cooper. Okay, so uh, Wade, so all of us. Wait, can you sort the candidates based on? Um... Probably not. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably yeah. not. Yeah. <coughs> well, okay. I it's hard for me to read with my head turned around, but I think uh, if we look at the top. The top three candidates, I think it looks like Paul Badger definitely, right? Is that right? Who's a uh, got? Did someone get six votes? Ginsburg, okay. Amy Ginsburg, Christina Hughes, okay. Ian Berg got four. Okay, so I think, um, I mean, based on that, I'd say the three candidates for sure for the short list would be uh, Paul Badger, um, Amy Ginsburg, and Christina Hughes. Um, beyond that, um, for the other ones, Berg.
And three candidates with three votes? Or three? three. We go with the top three since there's a significant difference statistically. Yeah. Okay. Up. Anyone else uh, have any thoughts about that? David, you look like you're uh, kind of mulling something over over there. Okay. All right. If, if everyone's in agreement, um, top four. And the fourth one would be then Berg. All right. Anyone um, anyone object to having a fourth one in the short list? OK. All right. Anyone else uh, want to keep it at three? OK. All right. Um, that's That's a legitimate point. Um, Debbie was just saying that if the goal is to have a candidate uh, with at least five votes from the board, um, Ian Berg hasn't met that threshold at this stage in the process, um, which is certainly a legitimate argument. I and mean, on the flip side, there are some deeper questions that we'll be asking in round two, which may shift people's opinions. Um, so I think uh, in the interest of you know, trying to make sure that we don't accidentally miss a strong candidate, I'm going to say we'll uh, go with the top four for round two. Um, so that means Paul Badger, Amy Ginsburg, Christina Hughes, and Ian Berg are moving on to the round two interviews. And uh, with that being said, um, the other 11 candidates here tonight, and again, thank you so much for taking the time to, number one, apply and put yourself out there, and then number two, to come here tonight and put yourself out here again on, at the podium um, and address us um, as board members. It's not an easy thing to get out in the out public and have to sort of make your case and make a pitch and I appreciate you guys again um, your willingness to do that and you are certainly welcome to leave at this point but you're also welcome to stay and can and observe the rest of the proceedings and try to settle on a candidate um, but with that I think we might take like a short uh, five minute recess and um, wait maybe you can get with the four candidates and the random draw thing and okay work on that so uh, we'll take a short five minute recess.
Um, is, there, is everyone here? Who are we missing? I'm what? Oh, no, everyone's here. Um, so Wade, can you tell us what's the, what's the order that we're going to see these? Uh, uh, I think we had the first one, and I tra truthfully didn't keep track. Um, hold on one second. Tina, when I go out, would you mind uh, come with me and um, get the names in order, and then you just tell the board? We'll, I'll get the, we're going to get the order, and we'll come right back. Okay. Okay, uh, board members, you guys have the list of questions, right? Do um, you have it handy? Yes. Um, so just to keep it simple, I'm going to start with um, Dave over there. Uh, David is uh, question number one, and then we'll work down the row. Then the next person will uh, start with Carol and so on and so forth. Yes. Sorry. David's asking number one, and then Carol's two, Ron's three. Four. Yep. No, no. Um, yeah, we're just doing the round two questions. Yep, because the round one questions were already addressed as part of the opening statement. Right. Then we'll just continue down the line for yep. start again with one. Yeah, so the first candidate will start with uh, question one from David, and then second candidate, question one from Carol. Third candidate, question one from Ron. Work it all the way. So we're. Uh, no, 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 it doesn't work. It goes one, two, three, four, <laughs> just keep counting. What's that? Oh, okay, so how do you want to do three, it then? Four, five, one, I don't two, need to say any questions. I already talked too much. <laughs> no, I think he... I'm setting... Yes. Okay, what, what Tracy said. <laughs> Got it, okay, that makes much more sense. Candidates, then they're going to be uh, at the podium in this order. Paul Badger first, Christina Hughes second, Ian Berg third, and Amy Ginsburg fourth. Um, just for everyone in the audience and uh, reminders to my board members, after the round of interviews, we are then going to take public comments uh, on the candidates. Then after that, we will deliberate on uh, who to nominate for the board position. Okay? Yes, the public comments. didn't say one way or the other. Um, uh, we have that as a rule, yes, for the regular board meeting. And I'm looking at uh, quite a few. Well, we'll get to the public comment and <laughs> we'll address it then. Okay, Wade, um, please send uh, Mr. Badger in. <clears> Hello, <throat> oh, Paul. Good um, evening. Thanks for uh, sticking it out with us uh, to this uh, level. Um, so we're going to ask a, a series of questions, um, which will be delivered by one, one of the board members. And um, in the response to each question, uh, please try to limit your answer to uh, two minutes. And I'll give you a, a signal if uh, you're exceeding two minutes. Okay. Um, but with that, uh, the, mm. yeah, well, I'll, I'll try to be a little more subtle. <laughs> I'll be a little more subtle. I mean, I might, uh, I might sure uh, to tap, tap to watch or something. but. Um, so with that, the first question will come from uh, David Frank. Yeah. Um, so w would you tell us, please, what you think are the key issues or challenges that are facing the district right now? One of the key issues uh, that I know face the district, as with most school districts in these days, is uh, the ability to be able to manage finances in a shrinking financial pool. Uh, balancing budgets is always a challenge. It's something that I uh, have been able to experience on a large degree, my personal business, and also uh, in the boards and committees that I've been working on uh, over the past 15 years. Um, 
so the ability to actually be able to manage fiscal responsibility in a challenging environment is something that uh, I look forward to uh, taking on and hopefully contributing um, some very thoughtful and unique op uh, options to help achieve the goals of the board and of the district. Um, so that's always a, a paramount concern. A second concern is being able to uh, continue the trajectory that Wissahickon School District has uh, been fortunate enough to be on for the past several years in terms of rising through the ranks uh, regionally as well as nationally in terms of polls for scholastic excellence. Uh, I mentioned that earlier on. That's something that is very important to me. I'm very proud that my alma mater has been able to um, achieve heights that it actually didn't have when I was here. I hope that's not a personal uh, reprimandum on me that I didn't keep the standards up while I was here. Um, but it's a very important thing. Uh, it's important from a number of perspectives. Obviously, having our children have the best education that they can possibly have is, is number one. Um, but it also has ancillary effects as well. Um, in my neighborhood, just this summer, we've had five houses turn over on our block. They all sold within a week of going on the market. Um, it's important to me because I'm in real estate, but more important because when I talk to the new neighbors coming in, one of the main reasons that they've chosen the Wissahickon School District as the school district of choice um, because they know that their children will be afforded a great education here. And in turn, that increases property values um, and increases taxes naturally because people will obviously pay more as, uh, as their uh, millage uh, rates may even stay the same or increase, but the values increase. And so affording our kids the best education that we can is, um, is very important uh, to me in terms of priority. And third uh, is special needs education as well as diversity, um, two of which I believe are growing in this community. Um, they are uh, issues that are near and dear to my heart, um, issues that I grew up with and that I've uh, learned through my life's experiences. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, are very important uh, to the community as well. And so special needs and diversity is also um, a major concern that I would like to help to improve if so fortunate to be elected to the board. Um, one other thing I didn't mention earlier is that I have a uh, five-year-old daughter who just started at Stony Creek this year. Um, earlier this summer, I carried a box of tissues for my wife as we walked in, and as she cried going in and going out um, because of the mixed emotions that come with uh, having a, a five-year-old that you now feel is growing up. Um, but to that point, uh, it's very important to me to be sure that um, I have a personal vested interest to be sure that she is afforded the best opportunities that she can, uh, hopefully enjoys the experiences that I've had uh, in matriculating through the Wissickon School District. Uh, and then my two-year-old daughter, who is not far behind, will hopefully be uh, rising through the ranks as well. Pennsylvania School Boards Association advocates that school boards focus on governance while allowing the superintendent to focus on management. How would you explain the difference between governance and management? I believe there's a fine line between governance and management, um, and both are very important roles. Um, so it's, it's important that they don't overlap, um, but it's important that they work in, uh, in sync organization with each other uh, so that progress is made and so that improvements can be made. Um, I believe that the, the goal of the board and uh, my goal as a member of the board would be to um, try to keep the unison that's necessary and that's important for growth and for continuity and uh, hopefully to help the school district to grow. And by grow, I mean not just in terms of numbers but in terms of uh, achieving the goals of the district. Um, I am fortunate having uh, grown up in this community for the past uh, almost 42 years. Um, I've made a lot of good relationships of uh, people who are teachers within the school district, administrators, um, other people who are vested in the community as well and in the educational system. And I hope that uh, through those relationships, I'm able to recognize the difference between the two uh, and help bridge gaps that may uh, potentially have not been uh, bridged in the past. Okay, Mr. Badger, I'm Ron Stoloff, and uh, I, I uh, have the privilege of asking you the third question. <clears throat> As a school board member, how will you balance the interests of students, employees, and taxpayers? 
That's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> if only it were. Um, there are always desperate, inter desperate interests of uh, stakeholders within the community, and often they come with uh, passionate opinions and uh, goals and objectives. And um, I think, although it's a difficult bridge to cross and to, and to merge, I think the success of a board is built upon the ability to, um, to make those disparate groups work uh, on some accord um, and semblance of, of uh, equality. And so I would, again, as I mentioned earlier, um, build upon the relationships that I have established already within this community. Um, I am now quickly building a, a parental base as well with, uh, with my young daughter at, at Stony Creek. And so I would hope to bring that component as well. So between the administration, between um, students, between the board, and between members of the community, uh, who all have vested interests, I would work very hard uh, making that as well a priority uh, to ensure that those gaps are, are concluded. Um, I will say I had the privilege of hearing one of the other um, uh, people that were interested in this position speaking earlier, and a good point that uh, was raised is the ability to hear focus groups and to hold focus groups of community members on an ongoing basis. Um, my background is in marketing. I have a, a BA as well as an MBA in marketing. And so I've conducted and been a part of more than my fair share of focus groups. But I think that's just one tool that can be used, as well as many others um, that I would love to elaborate on in the future, of ways in which we can um, get input from the different stakeholders, uh, get people engaged, and get people active in the system, uh, and help to be more of a part of the solutions, um, rather than to often hold gripe sessions and express their unhappiness about things, um, but to actually work in, in unison with us and contribute in a proactive way. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to ask the next question, but I have to tell you that I've been a Wissahickon uh, old life. Hearing you and seeing you as a well, Thank you very much for that. Thank you. This is an easy one. Board members are generally expected to attend two public meetings per month. In addition, there may be one or two committee meetings in a given month. Outside these meetings, you would also need to spend some time documenting beforehand. Are you comfortable with the time commitment necessary for this? I am. Okay. Yes. Well, I, actually, my wife and I, we, we did have that discussion um, prior to uh, me sending in a, a letter of interest. Uh, because it's important that um, anything that I take on and become a part of, that I um, give 110%. And that's just um, part of my nature and, and who I am. Um, and we did talk about the potential time commitment um, that this board would require. And yes, I am 100% confident that I would be able to dedicate uh, the time and resources needed to be an effective member. Given that this board appointment will only last until the November 29 election, who intend to run for election next November? I am uh, aware of the relatively short uh, tenure that this position would carry. Um, and I would, at this point, say yes. Um, if I were, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected or appointed today, um, I would still uh, pursue the opportunity to continue the work of the board. Um, I think with any board, particularly with the challenges that this board faces, um, a year and a few months is not necessarily an effective time period to be able to get acclimated, to be able to move things forward and to move the overall agenda forward. So seeking a, a full term um, following uh, this opportunity, if, if I'm so fortunate, uh, would be of interest as well as if I am not appointed today. Well, yes, I'd first just like to again thank the board uh, for one, allowing me the opportunity to be here this evening, um, and more importantly for your vote of confidence into having me into the second round. Um, as I mentioned, I um, have lived in this district uh, my entire life, um, I now have the second generation of 
um, badgers just starting in the district. Um, my parents and sister and wife are here this evening to, to show some support, but also to um, get a firsthand uh, experience as to how this process works. And I will say this is a very unique experience um, with all the boards that I've, I've participated in, uh, haven't had this type of an interview process. But uh, we were just talking in the hallway before coming in, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the openness of it, the candor, um, and the uh, ability to actually interact with your board um, rather than to be pushed in a closed room while discussions and votes take place. Uh, but thank you very much for allowing me to, to come in today, and um, I hope that I am successful in this endeavor, uh, and I hope to be able to contribute very positively to all the good work that this board has done and uh, hopefully continue that into the future uh, if appointed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> just, just a request to the board to speak loudly into the mic. We're picking up the candidate breaks, but the board has to speak. It was, it was all me. My, micro, my microphone was off. Terrible. That's a rookie move. Um, so, uh, Christine, I just wanted to let you know that uh, you'll be asked uh, five questions, uh, okay. each one to be delivered by one of the board members. Okay. And uh, in your responses, uh, please try to limit your response to about two minutes. Okay. Um, and if you, uh, each, for each question, that is. And if you okay. uh, start running a little long, I'll, uh, I'll give you a little signal. Okay. Uh, with that, first question will be from uh, Debbie Greenstein. I am Debbie okay. Greenstein. Uh, what do you think are the key issues or challenges facing the district right now? Great question. Um, so I guess first off, I want to start by saying, and I don't know if this will be a question, but in terms of my learning curve, if I were selected, is that is I definitely will need to spend some time coming up to speed on what the issues are that we're facing. I've done, of course, research for coming into this, but I really have entrusted the board um, with my kids being in the district to um, set goals and make good policies. And again, I've seen that through my kids' academic achievement as well. Um, I do think uh, capacity and capacity planning is an issue that we need to look at. Um, and I know that that is tough. I do that every day in my corporate world. Um, we have 25% growth year over year, and we're always constantly figuring out how do you scale, how do you grow. So um, I certainly would say one of the issues would be capacity planning and um, how do you anticipate growth into Bluebell and, and Ambler and the surrounding in the district, um, and then figure out how do you accommodate that. And clearly, I think with what's going on with Stony Creek, um, that's one of the hot topics right now. But how do you get ahead of that? So that would be something that I think um, in terms of, that would be one of the one of the issues. Um, I think the other one that, and, and again, I don't know all the metrics around it, but I think thinking about the goals around addressing each and every child, each and every student and his or her needs um, would also be um, an issue as well, one of the, the major issues that, that the board would be tackling. And how do you make sure that you're addressing every student's needs and being inclusive? Um, so that's, I would say those two. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> The Pennsylvania School Boards Association advocates that school boards focus on governance while allowing the superintendent to focus on management. Mm -hmm. How would you explain the difference between governance? Um, great, <laughs> great question. I actually had prepared that to talk about sort of my approach around as a board director 
ensuring that you're governing and not managing, because I, I definitely think it can be very easy to slip into micromanaging. Um, and again, I'm going to fall on to kind of my corporate um, experience is that um, I will build a leadership team and I empower my team to do the work that we have set out. So we've set goals and we go set them forth to go execute. Um, I am there and I will say sort of, if I were to say governing, it's to help guide and steer the ship as it were, but to not get in the weeds and manage their day to day. I'm there as a backstop if they have questions, if they want to bounce ideas off of me, um, but I'm not there actually doing the work for them or micromanaging or questioning their decisions. I may be asking a lot of questions to help them in their decision making, um, but I'm not actually doing the work for them or directing them, sort of dictating what they would do. So that's in terms of the difference between governance versus management. And I think if I could also sort of go back to Debbie's question too, probably another issue too around just as the board functions that I've thought about in considering my application is making sure that um, I'm capable of not falling into that micromanagement, um, but making sure that I am at that governance sort of perspective. And I think that's important um, in a director coming to this, this position. I get to deliver question number three. Um, as a school board member, how will you balance the interest of students, employees, and taxpayers? Did you hear that okay? I did. Um, students, employees, and taxpayers or employers? Employees and taxpayers. Um, wow, Dave, you got a good one. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, so my opening statement um, and also what I put in my letter in, of interest was about um, my passion around transparent communication and relationship building. So I think in terms of balancing the needs, I think, I think let's just own it. That's tough. That's a tough thing to do. And I think we strive to do our best. I don't know that we're always gonna make the right decision. I don't know that we're always going to be successful, but we strive to do so. And so I think through transparent communication with the three stakeholders, the students, the employees, and the taxpayers, I think you build that relationship and through that you're going to build trust. So I think in terms of balancing the needs, I would say it needs to start with trust and they need to trust us and we need to trust them. And I think in terms of the transparent communication, it's really important that we think about the information that we're communicating to the different stakeholders and determine what's the right method to communicate and how do you communicate? What words do you use? I think what you're gonna communicate to taxpayers and how you communicate it is very different from what you would communicate to a student and how it, you would communicate it. And I know that communication is one of the district's goals this year, um, and I, you're, there's a strategy in place, but I think that's really critical as you think about the students and the employees and the taxpayers, what you're communicating and how you're communicating it. And then just getting back to Dave, sort of balancing those needs, um, I, I think you need to Again, you have these meetings, you invite public comment. I think that's very critical. And it, that's gonna come with trust. So when the public comes and they trust that they can come here and provide comment and have dialogue, um, that's how we start to hear what are, they, what are their concerns, what are their pain points, and then have that be part of our conversation, the board's conversation, in terms of balancing the needs. Um, and I'm sure you're, there's gonna, this is going to be one of the questions, but um, you know, we also have to make sure that we're good fiscal stewards, right? So also at the end of the day, we need to make sure that we're using the money wisely. So, Board members are generally expected to attend two public meetings per month. In addition, there may be one or two committee meetings in a given month. Outside these meetings, would you, you would also need to spend some time reviewing documents beforehand. Are you comfortable with the time commitment necessary for this role? Um, so I did my research. <laughs> uh, I talked to a former board member, uh, actually past um, president, just to understand what the time commitment was because it was really important to me that I not apply if I were selected, that I am able to do the job to the best of my ability and, and to the full commitment. So 
I was, I am aware of the time commitment and I have thought through my schedule and um, I would not have applied for the position if I could not fulfill the commitment. So I am aware of that. Um, and through my current um, job, while I do have travel, I have control over that travel and can dictate what weeks I travel and what nights and days um, so I can work around the board meeting schedule. Thank you. Okay, and uh, uh, I'm Ron Stoloff and uh, <clears throat> Given that this board appointment will only last until November of 2019, uh, do you intend to run for a, a, a full term in November? I, uh, uh. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, right now, my intent is yes, I would run. So I would fulfill the, the tenure as stated, but then my intent is to run. That said, I also, um, this would be my first time serving in this type of capacity. Um, I have served on, a, on boards before of nonprofits, but this is a different, would be a different experience for me. So I also wanna acknowledge that I would serve my full term, but it may turn out that this might not be a good fit for me, or my skill set could be useful, or could be better utilized elsewhere. So I just, I wanna be straightforward and honest with you all that coming in, I do plan to run, but I also want to acknowledge that through the time frame, the year or so in serving as director, um, it may come to light that this is not a good fit and, and perhaps it doesn't make sense to run um, in the election. Thank you. Um, Christine, so those are the five questions and I'll okay. give you an opportunity to um, make a short uh, final statement if you want. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, thank you all very much again for your time and your consideration of my application. Um, as I indicated in my letter of interest, this is very serendipitous um, about this vacancy because my um, elder term is coming to an end. So I have time freed up in my personal life um, to be able to make this commitment. Um, also, because I have three children in the district who are still young, um, I want to be a part of the team um, that's helping guide the district and continuing to grow in excellence um, while they are here. Um, and then just lastly, um, this is probably more for the public. Um, hopefully you all read my letter of interest, but I just want to also echo that as a Yale alumni interviewer, um, I've interviewed several students from Wissick and um, High School, and I'm just, I am so incredibly impressed and excited for my kids to go to high school here. And um, for one student in particular, I actually wrote in her write-up, I said, um, this woman is gonna win the Nobel. <laughs> um, she was so impressive. So um, regardless of how this plays out, as you all have said, um, just going through the experience has been, has been awesome. And um, to be able to meet you all and um, to continue to, to find ways to stay involved. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, you're welcome to have a seat and uh, listen to the remaining candidates. Wait. Oh, next up we have Ian Berg. Hello? Hello, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, so, Ian, we have uh, five questions that uh, we're going to ask you. Each one will be delivered by one of my fellow board members. Um, and I ask that you try to keep your response to each individual question to about two minutes or so. I'll give you a, a signal if you're running long. Um, and uh, with that, up first, uh, Ronnie will have the first question. Hello. What do you think are the key issues or challenges facing the district right now? Well, I know that there are initiatives right now with uh, facilities and structure and schools and expanding those. And I, I think those are a priority. And I think uh, this, this region is certainly getting built up and changing in some of those demographics. And I experienced some of that in my previous school district in, in when I lived outside of San Diego and it seemed like there was a new neighborhood every day and I know those are the issues that uh, have come up but at the same time it's not a new issue. I know growing up in the area when the colonial school district had a dilemma there's a plot of land right next to their administration buildings and uh, it was slated for townhomes and they did the math and realized that it would cost more to educate those 
incoming children than they would ever gain in, in property taxes. And what they ended up doing was purchasing the land themselves. And those today stand as, as, the, um, as the new athletic fields. So I think those issues, uh, they've been around forever, uh, metaphorically speaking, and they will be around for a long time as things change. Uh, so I would say facilities, and then uh, I would say also curriculum. There's always a debate as to how you enhance the tide for all students versus tracking and catering to either your top or your bottom. And there's uh, certainly been innovations in education and technology programming that I know affected just how I studied for the, the different bar exams that I've taken and, and the different uh, graduate programs that I've uh, applied to on my resume used in college and law school. But I also know that when I applied for business school, that that was um, completely different test taking and, and methodologies. And I could go into that more as, as it would be helpful to you, but I want to be mindful of the two minutes uh, limit to each question. Crazy. The Pennsylvania School Board Association advocate, advocates that school boards focus on governance while allowing the superintendent to focus on management. How would you explain the difference between governance and management? Well, I, I feel like this question is, is um, very much geared towards the topics that I addressed in my letter of interest. As I say, I work in corporate fraud and corporate governance and making sure that uh, corporations are following their best practices. And what I, what I have found is management is applying a set of rules, almost like a game plan that's been coming up ahead of time and dealing with the personnel issues and, and making sure that they have the correct protocols in place to, to deal with what comes up. As I said in my brief three minute introduction, I think most of the times boards view governance uh, as the needs arise and it usually starts with a lawsuit or a problem and then there is an efficient and effective way that comes up to to resolve that and everybody has a good idea of the easiest path but there's a rule there are rules in place and procedures in place that don't allow for that most effective and creative solution so i think i view governance as anticipating what will happen and making sure the process is fair without regard to outcome and then management is making sure you get the best outcome when following those procedures and those rules. Uh, how will you balance the interests of students, employees, and taxpayers? Well, I'm going to start with taxpayers first because. Uh, you know, they, they, there's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting group. It's almost like you have to split taxpayers. There are taxpayers who are actively participating in the schools at the moment, and then there's taxpayers who are not. And those interests may not be aligned. And the way I view those fiscal responsibilities is that you have to take taxes off the table in the sense that you have to figure out as a school board what is best for the school what is best for the students and the administration. And I'm going to touch back upon the difference between students and the schools in a second. But you have to figure out what you need and what's most effective. And then take a second look at the finances and the monies and the funds that are required to do so. And again, drawing back to my uh, letter of interest, I talked about the different structure in California when you're capped with the property taxes and what you're able to, to do and to raise and the way that foundations have developed and PTAs have developed. I think our foundation budget was $8 million annually just to hire STEM teachers, which they called STEAM Plus and, and so forth. But I think once you figure out the best plans and procedures and what you want the school to look like, then you can address the fiscal possibilities, what's possible, what's feasible, what the community will tolerate, where you need to cut to add. Uh, some of you might remember the old, the old movie Dave uh, when Kevin Klein's impersonating the, the president and he goes old school and takes out his, his pen and pad like he would run an ordinary business. And then uh, when there's a big issue that affects taxpayers, that's more for the electorate. And those issues can be dealt with on the electoral cycle. But the best part is figuring out the best school you have with the funds available and making your recommendation for that. As far as real quickly, I know I'm running past my time on this question. Uh, as a parent of two students at the beginning of the school process, I want to stand up here and champion the needs of students first and foremost. 
504 plans uh, that my son is uh, my son has one because he's being treated for leukemia and it's a little bit different than what most people are used to but at the same time i think the best way to deal with students and schools is to have the best trained uh, administrators and faculty that you can have and that that funnels down whereas if you're always student geared sometimes there's a miss uh, a missing message so when i talked about leadership and leadership development what I, what I probably should have made more clear is I think that starts with your teachers and starts with your administrator. And I know that when I teach my leadership program, we spend twice as much time on facilitator education than we do on what we teach those college students. I am absolutely comfortable with the time commitment that is required of this role. Uh, reviewing documents is, is nothing new to me. Unfortunately, it's, if it's, it's the one thing that uh, I, I would like to say I would like to eliminate from my, my uh, work, but also something that I recognize is the most important. I like to come in more prepared, over prepared, and be able to go through any uh, avenue. I have always been committed to service and to involvement in organizations but I've always tried to limit my involvement to one organization at a time. I think uh, that that is the best way for me to add value uh, to the board and to the procedures and not be pulled in different directions. The only time I anticipate missing any, any meeting is when, uh, when I would have to travel out of town uh, for work. Uh, and I don't, I don't envision that being a, a, uh, a large obstacle. I get the final question. Uh, I'd like to know, given that the board appointment will only last until November 9, 2019 election, uh, do, do you intend to run for election next November? I, I would say uh, categorically, I would not uh, be foreclosed to running for election. I do think when you are appointed to a board and you're asking people to invest their time and energy and resources to catching you up to speed and getting you involved in everything that's been going on, that uh, you should be committed to, to investing yourself as well. And I do think that that investment, I foresee that investment leading to running for uh, the position when it's open. However, I think there is a big difference between, and, and uh, probably this opinion might not be shared, but I do think there's a big difference between being appointed to a board where you offer your, your best skills and services to an existing agenda to make sure that it's been done most effectively and efficiently versus putting a platform out there for people to choose and select and, and, and uh, ask you to serve. So I would anticipate that after spending time on this board, even the short time that you call it, but I think it's, it's a considerable amount of time to be able to uh, develop uh, your, your own vision, your own ideas, your own platform as to what you think is important. And if I'm able to put something together where I could put it up for scrutiny, then I would like to, to run and, and stay on the board if appointed and probably will do that anyway. Um, but if after the time served, I don't have my own vision and all I would be doing is saying, hey, everybody's doing a great job. Let's, let's keep doing it. I don't know if that's enough. It may be enough. I just don't know yet if that's enough to, to put up with someone um, until I'm more familiar with, with the process and, and your experience and dive deeper into the issues that are being addressed. Um, so Ian, that wraps up the, the prepared questions, but uh, I'll give you an opportunity to make a final statement or say some closing remarks about your candidacy if you want. I just want to say, uh, first of all, I appreciate uh, what, what your point you made about uh, being able to get the five votes uh, that are required to, to, uh, to, to move on. In fact, I probably would have supported that measure. But that being said, I'm glad that you all took the opportunity to let me come and clarify. I, I always have more in my mind and more to say on any subject that, that may come across uh, initially. So uh, having this opportunity to, to, to explain a little bit more about what I'm about and what my experiences are, uh, I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you. And our uh, final candidate will be Amy Ginsburg.
Hello, Amy. Hello. Um, so we are going to ask five questions of you. Each one will be delivered by one of my fellow board members. And um, in your response to each question, if you could try to limit your response to about two minutes or so, it would be appreciated. I'll give you a signal if you're running kind of long. But um, with that, the first question is Ron, right? Me. Oh, sorry, Carol. What do you think the key issues or challenges facing the district are right now? So I think there are a couple issues. Uh, one of them deals with facilities. Uh, we have a number of aging facilities, and I think in the years to come, we're going to have to look at replacing or modeling those facilities. And also, we have an issue of overcrowding um, and whether our current facilities can even handle the students that we have coming into our district. Uh, my son is at Stony Creek, and I know I've come here to several meetings with other parents from Stony Creek to express some concern about the overcrowding at our elementary school. And I'm pleased that the board has taken action to put that modular unit at our school. Uh, but I think this is going to be an issue moving forward for the board. And I think that uh, studies need to be done in order to see what type of uh, student body we have coming in, the number of students in the future, so we can plan accordingly to determine if the facilities we have are going to be adequate. Um, I think another issue facing not just our district, but districts across the country are, is safety. Are our students safe in schools? And what are we doing to ensure their safety? Uh, so I think that's certainly going to be an issue that's going to be not just in the coming years, but for many years to come. Another issue uh, that actually in talking to a number of, a par of parents in preparing to come today, just to find out what kind of issues um, are at the heart of parents in our community, it seems like there's a concern about the lack of free time that our kids have. Um, recess in particular, they're limited now to 20 minutes of recess in elementary school, K through five. And really, is that adequate? Um, I looked at a study from the Academy of um, uh, from Pediatrics, and they suggested 60 minutes is more adequate for uh, elementary school students. Uh, but then I also look at not just the amount of free time that they have during the day when they're at school, but also after school. My son's in first grade coming home with up to an hour of homework in the evening. And is homework really appropriate in the elementary school years? I've, again, looked at some studies and it suggests that that may be something we need to look at, is whether or not K through five should be, in fact, receiving homework or the amount of homework that they're currently receiving. Uh, during the day, my son, again, has 20 minutes of recess and then comes home and immediately we're starting homework uh, before we begin the evening routine. Uh, not much time for him to let off all that excess energy. And I've heard the same from other parents in our community that they really would like to see more free time for our students throughout the day. Okay. And uh, I'm Ron Stoloff. And uh, what I would like to do is ask you this next question. Uh, the Pennsylvania School Boards Association advocates that school boards focus on governance while, the, uh, while allowing the superintendent to focus on management. How would you explain the difference between governance and management? I think that the school board sets the tone for the policy and what needs to be implemented. And the superintendent is actually then the person that goes ahead and implements that policy and actually takes action upon what the policy is that the board sets. Um, I think you can look at it as a board of directors for a corporation and the CEO and that person is the administrative person that actually takes action then and takes um, uh, steps necessary in order to implement what the policy is of the board that makes that decision. Thank you. Hi there. Here's my question. As a school board member, how will you balance students, employees, and taxpayers? I think that's a tough one. Uh, all of them have uh, your strong needs. You want to make sure you're getting quality educators for our students and making sure that you're compensating them well and providing them with incentives to want to stay in our district and continue to educate our students. And you have students that you want to provide the best possible education to while still protecting the taxpayer. Um, I think that's definitely a tough balance to strike, but I think what we always need to do is put our students first and what our students need um, in order to make this school district the best possible district. Uh, so I think we always need to be looking at the students um, and what is best serves them. Thank you. Um, board members are generally expected to attend two public meetings per month. In addition, there may be one or two committee meetings in the given month. Outside these meetings, you would also need to spend time 
uh, spend some time reviewing documents beforehand. Are you comfortable with the time commitment necessary for this? Absolutely. And coming into this, this is a discussion I had with my husband. I wanted to make sure before I committed to anything that I had the time. Because I know in the past, uh, I've complained about his astrology club he belongs to and how much time he spends doing that. And I wanted to make sure he was comfortable with me doing something outside the house, um, belonging to an organization, um, being part of this board. And I, I'm 100% committed to doing whatever is necessary in order to be part of this board. I understand. I've looked at the schedule of when the meetings occur. I've looked at the meeting times for uh, when the committees meet. Uh, and I understand from having met with um, prior and current board members the amount of documentation you need to review. And that's something that I do every day in my career as well. So I think it's certainly something I can find time to do at home uh, for the board as well. Mike, I have the uh, the last question for you. Uh, given that the board appointment will only last until November of 2019, do you intend to run for election next November? Yes, my plan is to run next November. Okay. Uh, well, that wraps up the prepared, prepared questions. And uh, I want to give you one last opportunity to uh, make a short comment uh, about your candidacy to the board if you want. Thank you. Well, first, thank you for considering me. Um, I'm happy that you chose me to be one of the final four. Uh, I'm a mother in the district, and that's like my primary reason for wanting to seek this position is I have three children. They're going to be coming up to the district in the coming years, and I want to make sure that I'm part of the process, that I'm helping to make decisions that make it a better school district for them as well as the other students in our district. And I thought by being a part of this board, I would be able to do that, to influence decisions that help affect their education. Um, I think I have a lot of experience from having been, been an attorney for 13 years. Um, from my experience of representing individuals, I think that would tra transfer well to the board, being able to represent our students and their families. Um, and just my experience in general from being an attorney, being able to review large amounts of documentation, making decisions on a regular basis, I think it's certainly something that uh, would carry over to the board. And uh, I just I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, have a seat. Um, so uh, that concludes round two with the interviews and uh, the next step in the process. Uh, we're going to take public comment um, on um, board candidates. A bunch of people counted, I think about eight or so, people submitted uh, blue sheets, uh, wanted to speak. Um, now all eight are on the same topic for the same Seven out of yeah. So we have like about seven. Looks like about well, we have many speakers who want to uh, speak in support of uh, Amy Ginsburg's candidacy. Um, our typical policy at the board is when we have multiple speakers uh, signing up on the same topic, we limit speakers to uh, three. Um, so I guess uh, in the interest of time, um, I would like to. Uh, there's about seven speakers here who signed up to support of Amy. Um, yeah, suggestions on how we. Uh... You have a spokesperson. <laughs> um, uh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Oops. There's one other speaker that signed up for a topic that's outside of our uh, agenda tonight. And as I said at the beginning of the meeting, that uh, given the, the length of the meeting already, um, anyone who's, I'm only going to be taking public comments on the board candidates themselves or the board process to uh, fill the vacant seat. Uh, the topics listed here are not that. And I would recommend that um, this person, if they're still here in the audience, uh, consider coming back to our next board meeting or a subsequent one where we do have a session or section of the agenda specifically designed for public comment on any topic. Um, so that was uh, Lee Russo, um, but again, not taking that comment. Yes.
Yeah, what, um, after we listen to public comment, we'll spend some time here at the table deliberating. Um, I will ask for nominations uh, among, the among the four candidates here um, for the board seat. And uh, once we have all nominations sort of surfaced, we'll take a roll call vote and see if any one candidate gets at least five out of eight votes. Um, we'll be done. If that's not the case, if there's just like a split, we may do a runoff. We may do something <laughs> to figure out how we can hone in on, on one candidate. Okay, uh, do we have a game plan for public comment? Who, uh, who's the, who wants to be the spokesperson? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, thank you for your time tonight. My name is Andrea Cocodrilli. I am the proud parent of an 11th and 8th graders in the high school and middle school. I am a certified teacher working in a neighboring district in the autistic support department. Um, when it was time for us to make a decision about where to buy a home back in 2007, I realized that our surrounding school districts were above average, but they were not anywhere near the ranking of the Wissahickon School District. I wanted only the best for my children. Because education is so important to me, I have, vested, I have a vested interest in who gets appointed and elected to the Wissahickon School Board. I am speaking this evening to advocate for Amy Ginsburg. Amy has been a litigation attorney for 13 years and has passed seven bar exams across the country. For the past seven years, she has been the lead attorney for her practice group here in Ambler. Not only has Amy been working full time studying and passing bar exams, but also volunteering in many different capacities in our community, including being room mom to her son's kindergarten class last year at Stony Creek. Amy has also volunteered to teach a civics lesson to fifth graders in the North Penn School District. That being said, Amy is a strong proponent for public education. She believes that all children, no matter their background or learning abilities, have access to and receive the best possible education. In addition to Amy's professional accomplishments and dedication to her community, Amy and her husband, Jake, are raising three beautiful children right here in Lower Gwinnett. I believe Amy will serve our community and our schools well. Thank you for your consideration of Amy Ginsburg. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bill Rogers. Uh, I'm uh, uh, the father of two twins that are uh, very good friends with uh, with one of Amy's children. Um, and, uh, and my wife wanted uh, me to come here to speak on behalf of Amy. Um, so, uh, so I appreciate the opportunity. And I just want to say that a uh, um, couple things. First off, you've got some very, very strong candidates. And no matter who wins, I do want to say that I hope uh, to see several of these people running uh, next fall. Um, and uh, in terms of Amy specifically, I think a lot of what her words, what, what she spoke to, uh, were qualifications in terms of doing the job day to day. But, but I think that uh, also, um, what I think needs to come across is just the passion that she has. Um, and, um, you know, having uh, both of my children in the, the kindergarten class last year, she was very involved um, and, you know, was the homeroom mom and she really coordinated a lot of things. She's very involved um, and wants to, uh, you know, definitely wants to uh, have a long term commitment to the, the school district and making sure that it's set up. Um, for the future, uh, she obviously wants to run again, and and I think some of these other candidates would as well. But I think having somebody who's committed for the long run, um, I think, uh, would make a difference. I hope that uh, hope that you consider her. Um, and uh, my children are also friends with some of the other candidates, so I hope that uh, you know I hope that uh, everything goes really well. And I know you guys have a very tough choice, but I uh, hope you support Amy. Thank you. Take one more speaker if uh, anyone wants for uh, 
Ginsburg. Hello, everyone. My name is Shannon Harkins. I work with Amy um, and have worked with her there for the past five years. Uh, I bring a little bit of a unique view, I guess, because I don't actually have any children in this school district. But I came here tonight uh, because I wanted to tell you that I think Amy is the right person for this position. She's incredibly hardworking and diligent, and that makes her reliable as a result. She every day sets goals and priorities and implements other people setting them out. So it sounds like exactly what you all do. Additionally, what I think is most important about Amy is she engages members of the community at all levels. And I think the fact that eight of us came out here and sat here tonight uh, speaks for itself. She is concerned with the achievement of all of the students. Um, also, obviously, she has a vested interest for her own children, but she is definitely of the understanding both in work and in her personal life that the success of the whole, the success of everyone, is built on the success of all of the individuals. And I think that's um, something that seems to be a goal of the school board here as well. So um, I really appreciate your attention. And again, I see you have a very hard decision to make. So we'll leave you to it. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. OK, well, um, that will conclude the public comment section of our meeting. And uh, now comes the the interesting and uncomfortable part of <laughs> this, discussing um, the fine candidates that have made it to uh, this uh, final round. Um, I, I mean, I think um, we can discuss. Um, I think at, what we want, what I want to get to, is to the point where um, we can nominate people to be considered for an actual roll call vote of the board. Um, where we would vote visually to the, the person that we want to uh, fill a vacant. Um, I think that as a matter of order, the way we'll do it is um, when someone wants to make a nomination, I think we have to make a motion to nominate so-and-so. Someone seconds it. So then is that person? OK. And then I will, I will continue to solicit any other nominations until we nominate all four people or <laughs> we're done. <laughs> Or oh, we're done with the people that want to be nominated and go roll call vote. Um, but prior to that, uh, if anyone wants to make any comments about in, uh, the four candidates. Well, uh, just a short comment. And again, a compliment to all of you. Uh, and uh, it's uh, you guys have really made the job difficult that you're going to see. But uh, that is also a tribute, uh, not only to you, obviously, but to the Wissican School District that we can attract the kind of people who want to help us continue to doing uh, the great job that we're doing now already. And I thank you again and again and again. Carol? Uh, I have a nomination. Is that OK? Are we not done uh, comments? Uh, you know, I guess, uh, yeah, if you want to nominate someone, feel sure. free. Sure. Uh, I would like to nominate Ian Berg. Okay, do I have a second? Second, okay. So Ian Berg's a nomination. Any other uh, nominations? Yes. I'd like to uh, nominate. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ron, you want to go first? Okay. Okay. So Paul Badger is nominated as well. What else? Yes. Yes, Ron. I'd like to uh, nominate Amy Ginsburg. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. I'd like to nominate Christine Hughes. Okay. All right. So we, uh, we got the full house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need a second. Sorry. I'll second that. Here we go. Um, okay. Well, so we didn't do any narrowing there, but. Now we have four candidates who are um, nominated. So Michelle, then how do how do uh, do I do a roll call? Um, I think what I'd like to do is well, if I did a roll call in each nomination, then would wouldn't it be like biased towards whoever gets called first? They get five votes. Oh, so so it's a it's a roll call to of all four of all against all four candidates. Is that right? Oh, it, it, it was uh, 
as I remember, uh, the way it was done, it was a roll call, and, uh, and the, the individual board members voted for each of the nominated candidates. Is that correct? Yeah. All right, right, but you pick, pick one out of the four. Correct. Okay. Only, yes, you can only vote for one. Yes, okay. All right, are, are, are we ready? I'm not sure I'm ready. <laughs> um, okay. Mrs. David. I vote for Paul Badger. Mrs. DiPietro. I vote for Ian Berg. Mr. Frank. Paul Badger. Ms. Greenstein. Paul Badger. Mrs. Heyman. Paul Badger. Mr. Stoloff. Amy Ginsburg. Mrs. Walsh. Paul Badger. Mr. Antonio. Paul Badger. Six for Mr. Badger. Okay. I, uh, congratulations, Paul Badger. Um, okay, now you want to hear what you want, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, again, th thank you to all uh, the candidates who came tonight, in particular the four that uh, made it to the, the final round. Um, and uh, again, as I said earlier, um, I was uh, uh, an applicant for a vacant board seat in 2015, and I didn't get it, and uh, I chose to run in the, in the following election and got on, got on the board, and uh, I would ask the finalists who didn't make it tonight to uh, think about that and take that into consideration uh, for 2019. And I just want to point out one thing that this, this you serve until November of 2019, that election is only for a two year time period. Usually our board seat is for four years, but since, because this is in the middle of one, you would run in 2019 in November for a two year term. And then after that, then it would be a four year term after. That's to right. Verify it, that. But the right. Right. But uh, it this, actually starts in February. Yeah, it, it, it right. starts. It basically starts too early. Um, but um, <laughs> the the point that Tracy makes is an important one: is that uh, we're appointing someone to uh, fill seat left vacant by Tiffany Hodgson, and um, <laughs> the election of 2019 would be to finish the remainder of her four-year term, which is only two years after that. So um, the election, the person. Paul, you, if you choose to run for election, it would be till November 2021 um, to finish out the remaining two years of Tiffany's original term. Yeah, because it's so much fun. But um, so I, I, our uh, plan would be then to uh, have Paul you to be formally, uh, I guess, sworn in and uh, appointed to the board at the board's next meeting on Monday, uh, September 24th. Um, and I guess uh, Wade. I could probably give you more of the, the details. But uh, congratulations, and uh, we're excited to have you uh, join the team here. Uh, and uh, uh, before we go on, uh, we've been talking about how Carol and uh, Joe uh, tried to do what you did, were not appointed, but then ran uh, in the following election and were. I forgot to mention that I, too, went through this procedure so, from years back. So if you notice, out of nine people, Three people were where I can't even say losers because you're not. People who tried, <laughs> you know, uh, people who tried to uh, to get the appointment were not successful, but that didn't stop them, and they ran, and they were, and they, uh, the whole community got behind them, and they were elected to the board. I expect to see you all on the ballot again and again. Thank you very much. All right, with that, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? No move. Second. Me, meeting adjourned. Hey. <laughs>